So today, we have to talk about the power of the Lord. You need to understand the reason why God says it is not good for a man to be alone. I'm sure there are some other men out there. You are married people, but you don't regard your marriages, your wives, they are nobody people in your homes. Let me tell you, some are married, but that which God says it is not good for a man to be alone. It's not yet manifested. The reason why God brought a woman with you is not yet manifested. You have not yet seen it. And there are others who are saying, I will marry in five years to come. And yet, there are other points where they can marry them. Others, they have been wounded by some other women and they don't want to enter in another relationship. But mind you, listen to this point. Paul said again that it was good for a man to be as the way he was. That was Paul's suggestion. But he said because of something else, your desire, find one for you, for yourself. It is not righteous, Mr. Bailon. It's not that time to find righteous. So we'll talk about the power of a woman. Our scriptural reference comes from the book of uh, this is what we call Second Kings chapter 4. From verse number one, that says, uh, now the wife of one of the sons of the prophets cried to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. And Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, and what have you in your house? And she said, Your servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, Go outside. Borrow vessels from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and <coughs> not to few. Then go in and shut the door behind yourself and your sons, and pour into all the vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. So she went from him and shut the door behind herself, and that's all. And as a support, they brought the vessels to her. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said, she said to her, There's not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. If you want to know how to draw in the anointing, you can be a minister of the gospel, you can be a business person, everyone in this world, in whatever field of your calling. Others are called as teachers, others are called in many other areas, in business, in work, in several things that we can talk about. For one common good of man, to his creator, you need the oil. And how can you provoke the overflow oil or to see an overflow grace in your life to not neglect a woman? When it comes to this issue, do not neglect a woman. A woman can pull you down. A woman can promote you. If you look at the Bible, there are wicked women like Jezebel. Elijah was a highly anointed man. A man that would pray fervently. A man that would speak to heavens and heaven would close. A man that was living a life in the mountains. Fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Who would have been carried by the Spirit of God to another place. But he laid away from a woman. He never feared the king. But he feared the wife of a king who was Jezebel. Don't undermine the presence of women all over the world. In your family, at your workplaces, those secretaries, be very careful and watch for them. They can be the reason of your promotion, they can be a reason of your demotion. Let's go to the scripture reference. This woman was in depth in the house, and the husband died. This was a widow, in other words. Let me tell you, sons of the prophets all over there. We are in a generation, we are in a time, I'm telling you, this is the end time, where the prophetic ministry has risen like eagles. It cannot be stopped. The ministry of prophetic cannot be quenched because in the end time, sons will prophesy. 
when the Holy Ghost shall come upon them, even servants who prophesy, who prophesy. Let me tell you the secret how to grow even in the level of prophecy. How to mount yourself higher on the wings of an eagle with the eyes of the eagle. Don't undermine a woman. Let me repeat, it is not good for a man to be alone. There are fellow ministers outside there. A minister of the gospel is not ready to marry. It is not a problem not to marry, but discover if you are called like Paul. And of all the apostles, we want to hear more about Paul that he was the one who was not married. No. Let me tell you, even salvation power. We talk about salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. But Jesus entered the world through the womb of a woman. The power of salvation was invested in a woman. The power that was to heal, to raise the dead, to perform wonders and miracles was invested in a woman. Watch this, child of God. Look at the first miracle that Jesus did. Who provoked that miracle? It was a woman, Mary, who knew when the wine was over. They were giants, they were men, they were philosophers, they were professors, highly educated people. But they had no idea on how to come up another wine in the midst of the ceremony when wine was over. But a woman introduced them to Jesus. Provoked Jesus. A woman knew where to get the new wine. If you undermine a woman, you will run dry. A woman, Jesus said, Woman, what do I have for you? My time has only come. A woman did not stop. A woman doesn't give up easily. If a woman gives up in your life, so it means you have a problem. If she begins to withdraw herself from you, it means you have a big problem. And that is your downfall. Some ministers have collapsed because a pastor did not love a woman. A pastor never loved a woman, never knew what is to love a woman. A man of God concentrated on the anointing, and yet the maintenance of the anointing was in the woman. The reservoir for the oil was through the woman. The power of salvation is invested in the woman. So what you are reading here, you can see that this woman, as a widow, when he went to a prophet, a prophet was looking for the oil that can quench the depths. A prophet asking something from a woman. It's a woman of the challenge that you are talking about. I am anointed by God, but I cannot do it just myself. What do you have? Can you display what you have? A woman never said, I've got blankets in my house. A woman never pointed, I have got a piece of land to sell. A woman said, I have a little oil in that jar. It was a woman that went and collected many other empty containers from neighbors, gathering resources together that the oil should overflow. You can be a man of God, you can be a son and a prophet. And then you don't consider loving your wife. Of all the services that you are rendering to your master, of all the services you are doing, you need to understand that the oil is invested in your wife. I tell you something, Jamaica. You can go to the mountain, fast and pray, as a son of a prophet, who speaks in tongues, blasting in tongues, coming down from the mountain. If you don't love your wife, that fire in you will be quenched. She can drain your energy. She has the ability to drain the energy. She has that ability. But also to look for the way that it can multiply. How do we multiply? How do we grow in the anointing? Let me tell you this, child of God. Jesus Christ growing in wisdom, but also in stature, even in the fear of God. How did he manage to do that? Jesus reigned me to know the power of a woman. That's why I said, woman, you are like she to them. My time has not yet come. There was one common thing that was between the master and Mary. Mary knew for this man to start performing miracles, it's not only that because Jesus went to the fast in the wilderness. The 
Bible says he went to fast for 40 days to overcome Satan right in the wilderness. But the key to start a miracle, to start working in a miraculous life that has been impacted in his life, the key was the woman Mary, who, said, who went to press the demand to make sure that the power in him should begin to flow. Many other people there, your business has shut down. Your career is not producing the results because you are undermining women. You said because you are the one that went to college, you are the one that are working, you are the one that goes to work every day. You forget one thing, that you cannot begin to explore the niches that the God has invested in you if you neglect a woman. A woman has the ability. Just like in the book of the second Kings chapter 5, a man tried all that he could do. He never knew that the man that he passes here is a prophet, is a man of God. But a woman says the man to something when Elisha was passing by. He said to the husband, he said, my husband, I perceive the man that he passes here is a man of God. You know, this, this family, this couple, was lacking the fruit of the world for many years. A man tried what he could do. He was very rich. They had everything in the house, but they were no child. How about the woman connected to a husband? There are some men that are watching me there. You resist your wives to go to a prophet. You resist your wives to go to prayer, to intercessions. You say you don't want your wives to be involved in things of God via a certain man of God. Simply because you buy marriage for them, you can provide their daily needs. But let me tell you, you will not progress and break off in a certain area. You will not be able to reproduce yourself. Whether you're a man, you cannot bring your own copyright. You can't bring forth a child by yourself. You will need a woman because God has invested in a woman. A woman is there to reproduce what God has given us.